G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, AKA Hippo. Today, we're gonna learn how to make a super convincing 3D sphere in After Effects without any plugins. Here we are within After Effects, your happy place. Now the point of today's tutorial is to make a convincing 3D sphere within After Effects. If you know After Effects, it's a two-dimensional animation program or 2.5 dimensional. There's some aspects of it where you can do some 3D stuff, but it's not designed for 3D work. So how do I get a spinning 3D sphere in After Effects? Well, there's a couple of effects we can use um, to mimic the look of a 3D sphere and it's relatively convincing. So that's what we're gonna run through today. Um, I've got this entire project for you to follow along in the link below. Go ahead, open that up, and we can create this sphere together step by step. When you download the project via the link in the description, this is what you'll be presented with. This is what I've uh, given you in the project, this background footage uh, with some cool effects already applied to which we can then add this 3D sphere. To create this sphere, we're gonna use an effect called CC Sphere. We're then gonna add a bit of glow and also animate a hue cycle just to add some extra effect onto the sphere. So to create your sphere, you're gonna go Layer New Solid or Control Y, and you're gonna make that solid, uh, let's make it, let's make it purple. Just any purple will do. And then we're gonna pre-compose that solid. So Control Shift C to pre-compose or Command Shift C on Mac, and then name that your sphere. So now we have this pre-composition with just a purple solid inside. So we're gonna add another solid in there. So layer, new solid, make this one black. Okay, and right click that, go effect, generate uh, grid. So this pre-composition will determine what our sphere looks like. So you could technically add anything in there. You could add a texture or some cool abstract shapes, whatever you want. But for the purpose of this tutorial, uh, we're gonna have this purple solid and a grid. If you want to, you can also just adjust the opacity down on that slightly, like that, maybe 40. Okay, now head back to your main comp and on your sphere pre-comp, go ahead and right click, go effect, perspective and CC sphere. So what CC sphere allows us to do is mimic that 3D look, right? So we've got actual rotation, 3D rotation, X, Y. So we'll definitely be playing with those. Um, also come down to light light intensity, light height, so where it's hitting, and also the direction where the light is coming from. You can also go a step further down to shading, then allows you to adjust each of the, each of the shading parameters individually, diffuse, specular, adding that sort of shiny specular spot that you get on uh, shiny 3D objects, um, spreading that specular with the roughness, so I'm gonna have a play here. I'm just gonna set the light intensity to 100, the line height to 50, um, and the light direction, let's start um, at zero. With the shading, you can play around with this yourself, but I have my settings, ambient 20, diffuse 100, specular 20, roughness 0.05, metal 73, and reflective zero. So you've got your 3D sphere. That seems pretty simple, right? But to sell it, you gotta make it move and act like a 3D sphere within your composition. So let's scale it down just a little bit here. And let's go to the beginning of the composition. And let's press P for position on our sphere. And if we move our P around, you can see it's moving the sphere just in normal two dimensional space. So we're gonna pop a keyframe at the beginning and then watch the movement of that of my hand, it comes down and you find the endpoints of wherever your movement needs to be, move it down. So from there and down, and then it's gonna go back up to there again. So we'll move it back up and then back down there, bottom movement again, back up. And we'll maybe make this one go just a little bit higher. Maybe we bring that back there. Back down again. And then we want it to end where we started. So we take the first keyframe, control C, take our uh, indicator down to the end there and control V. So that'll create that 
perfectly loopable option there. Obviously the movements are quite jerky. So what do we do to smooth that out? Press U on the keyboard to bring up any animated properties on that layer. Um, and select all your keyframes by just pressing the position word here. Right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. So let's just have a look at what that looks like. Smooths it way out for you. What I actually wanna do is I just wanna bring this first one up a little, and then obviously we have to copy that one again, go to the ending and replace that last one with control V. So we've got our basic movement down, but we just don't have that 3D look yet, do we? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate the rotation of the sphere. It's gonna mimic 3D. It's gonna be as if we're throwing that ball up in the air and it's spinning and coming back down and going back up and spinning a different way and coming back down, okay? Let's start at keyframe zero. We're gonna start our with our X rotation at zero. Just hit that stopwatch there. You might as well hit the stopwatch on all three rotation properties there as well. So now if we press U on the keyboard, you can see that rotation X, Y, Z is keyframed there and ready to go. So we can actually go in here, make a change and it'll automatically be keyframed. Moving down to that first position there, the ball is moving down. So maybe I'll make it rotate forward slightly. So from there forward and then I reckon it's almost gonna keep going. So you can actually bring that forward to this first one here and rotate it forward just a little bit further. All right, let's play that. Yep, and then from that point, it's gonna go across two more keyframes, but maybe rotate back up again, back up the other way, but not all the way. And then we're gonna make it rotate backwards the other direction and then it's gonna finish off back where we started again for a clean loop. So control C, your first keyframe, down to the end, control V. And then remember, we're gonna make things smooth. So select all your keyframes by pressing the rotation X word, right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it's added some nice little 3D movement there. Pretty cool. I might actually adjust the light angle here. So if we come to CC sphere, sorry, the light direction, we'll make the light come from over, a little bit over there, make it look a little bit more 3D. We are getting there. Again, you can go in there and adjust things, but what I'm gonna do as well, I'm just gonna animate the Y properties as well. So come in here and you can make it a little bit random. So I'm just gonna animate that that way and it's gonna spin back to the minus. It's gonna go back that way. Oops, it's gonna go back the opposite direction and then end up with that first keyframe again. So control C on that first key keyframe and then control V at the end. Select all the keyframes, F9 on the keyboard or right click keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, now we've got some really good random three dimensional movement on that sphere. You can go further and animate Z as well. Let's just add one keyframe in the middle here for Z. Take the first keyframe back to the front, select them all, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Let's just play that and see what that looks like. So again, just a little bit of randomness there, making it seem like a 3D ball that's moving around in space. Now, if you've seen my previous tutorial, I love myself a hue cycle. So if you go to hue saturation um, in your effects, drag that onto your sphere layer, um, and we're actually gonna animate the channel range from zero through to the end of the composition. So click the little stopwatch down to the end of the composition um, and we're gonna go one X. So that means it's gonna make one full rotation of the master hue. So let's see what that looks like. You can see there it's rotating a hue throughout. With that hue uh, cycle animated there, it matches up perfectly with some of the work I did in the background there. Um, just make sure that you're doing a full 1x, so 360 degree hue cycle from beginning to end and it'll match up perfectly. Now I do wanna add some motion blur to this uh, sphere as well. That'll help it settle into the composition a little bit more and look a little bit more natural. So if you make sure that your global uh, motion blur switch is on and then make sure the motion blur switch on the sphere itself is on as well, you'll see that there's now a little bit of motion blur when the ball moves up and down. Now there is actually a way to change the intensity of your motion blur uh, composition wide. If you go to composition and composition settings, come over here to advanced, you can see that the shutter angle here is set to 400. Now I've set it to around 400 
because I want my motion blur to be very strong. Uh, the normal shutter angle of say like a film camera or or for normal motion blur is 180. So that's the, the standard setting is 180. But if you don't, but if you feel like there isn't enough motion blur, like it doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like there's enough motion blur there. Then you can go in to advanced composition settings, advanced settings and change that shutter angle to something like 400. And then you can see a much clearer or a more intense um, motion blur on your object. Now, one thing that's missing so far guys is a bit of a glow on the sphere. So you can see here, nice little colorful glow that'll just help sell it that a little bit more. So come down to your sphere layer, right click effect, stylize and glow. Change the glow to be based on the alpha channel. Threshold to about seven. Glow radius to 600. Glow intensity to 3.3. .3. Composite original on top. Glow operation, saturation. And then change the color of your glow or color A to the same as your sphere at the beginning of your composition. So at the beginning of our composition, it is purple. Now, if we scrub through here, we'll see that no, it changes green, right? Or it changes to yellow and the glow is staying purple. Well, to fix that, all you have to do is pop your glow effect above your hue saturation effect. That way the hue saturation is affecting all of the effects, <laughs> affecting all the effects that precede it on that layer. So here we have our 3D sphere moving around in 3D space, a bit of a hue cycle going on, a bit of a glow and a bit of motion blur to really sell it. Only thing that I would add right now is maybe some sway, some positional sway. So let's go in here to sphere, press U on the keyboard um, and position here. So let's come forward when it gets down to this point, when it comes up here, let's see where my finger sort of moves in there. So let's make it move to the right when my finger comes in. I'll move that up slightly as well. So just sort of like just bounces. I'll just bring it in slightly so it's not too hectic and I'll bring it up again. So a slight little positional sway there you can see. And then when it comes back down here on that same position keyframe there, I'm just gonna move it across to that side. So it's coming down over there. Then it's when it comes back up, I think I wanted to go a little bit further to the right. Go back down and then when it comes back up again, it needs to be in the same position as before anyway. So let's not affect, let's not change that one there. So I've added that little sway. Again, it just adds a little bit of natural movement to the sphere. Now I just want to talk about some final touches that I've added to the effects layer. One effect that a lot of uh, compositors use is noise. Noise blends things together. It makes different elements of a composition stick and it just looks cool sometimes, right? adding noise onto your layer, unchecking use color noise, and then adding about 5% just adds a nice little grain to your composition. And to me, it's blending that 3D sphere in with some of the other elements like the background and my hand. Then we have posterized time. Now, I love posterized time and posterized time is basically converting that smooth 25 frames per second into um, into something more like 12 frames per second. So it makes it look a little bit more jerky, as you can see there. Just another aesthetic effect you can add up to you. Then guys, I haven't talked about this one yet in some of my tutorials, but optics compensation. So optics compensation is generally used to fix fisheye lenses to make them look like normal lenses. Um, but you can actually come in here, change your field of view, and then reverse the lens distortion. And it makes this cool effect where it looks like you've created this three semi 3d world. If we play that, it really ties everything together nicely. And I feel like we have something here that I'd be happy to show on my portfolio. So that is how you create a 3d sphere in after effects. Like I said, after effects, known for its two dimensional animation, 2.5 D and a little bit of 3d sprinkled in there, but not for its 3d modeling or 3D rendering, but you can still achieve stuff like this in After Effects in a pinch. Like I said, it's not CPU intensive, it's super fast to render, and it generally passes pretty well for a simple 3D sphere. Now to recap quickly what we did, we used CC Sphere to make a pre-composed grid into a 3D sphere. We then edited the rotation and the position 
to make it float in 3D space. We added some additional effects to help sell the whole composition and made sure they had stuff like motion blur and noise on there just to again, just sell it that little bit further. CC Sphere is great to play around with. It's actually quite well known for creating little planets, as you can see here. Super cool way to create an easy little earth with a basic texture and being able to adjust that sun angle around Earth itself. So guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. There's a lot of cool effects with an After Effects um, that can get you results like this. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, hit that like button and uh, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks guys.